at time for our next speaker. So Brad Pitt, Peter, are you ready? I nearly called you Brad Pitt then. I'm sure you had that before. Okay. There you go. I, I have heard that before. <laughs> it, it does make it hard to Google me. <laughs> yeah, true. Cool. Okay, over to you, Brad. Okay, thank you. So I will be presenting today on the floodwater depth estimation tool and implementation that we have designed for Google Earth Engine. Um, and, and these are my co-authors here. I'm a geographer with the University of Alabama working with the Surface Dynamics Modeling Lab here at UA. So I first want to acknowledge the project that this is part of, as well as some of the groups that have funded the research. Uh, so the, the work I'm presenting today is part of the WaterServe CyberSeed program initiative. And what this is, is a cyber infrastructure for analysis, visualization, and sharing of hydrological data. I have links here for, uh, for your interest if, you, if you'd like to look at any of them. I'd also like to thank um, the Dartmouth Flood Observatory and also the Earth System Science Center at, the U at UA Huntsville, who we've partnered with as well. So some background and motivation for this project. As we know, floods are recurring natural disasters that impact the socioeconomic well-being of humans across the globe. Um, and according to recent international disaster database reports, approximately 85 million people are affected globally um, in some way by floods each year between 2007 and 2016. And flood depths, Flood depth maps are critical tools for urban planning, emergency response, and the floodwater depth estimation tool is a fast geographic solution that relies on minimal inputs. And this floodwater depth estimation tool was first developed by uh, Cohen et al. in 2018 and was later updated in 2019. So we have these, these fast geographic solutions um, and we can make flood depth maps relatively quickly, but how can we scale the process? And if you remember the title, Google Earth Engine is one way that we are streamlining and scaling this process. So a quick overview of how the floodwater depth estimation tool works is it relies on a digital elevation model as well as a flood extent layer. So having the elevation model and the flood extent layer, you can basically identify the elevations at the uh, boundary of the flood margins and use those elevations to create a cost surface model across the terrain and subtract that new surface from the existing elevation model to, cap to compute the, uh, the difference between the two and return an estimated depth. So why Earth Engine? So one reason we decided to use Earth Engine is so that we can streamline the process by utilizing the cloud source geospatial data and analysis functionalities of Google Earth Engine. It's an open access and easy to use tool for in this case, rapid inundation mapping. It's also a geographically scalable solution for mapping flood depths across large areas. And I'll show some examples of that in the slides. And one advantage to using Google Earth Engine that we found was that the ability to access and use DMs stored in the Earth Engine repository greatly reduced uh, the in earlier versions of FWDET, most time consuming uh, processes or pre-processing. In addition, um, Earth Engine is an application that makes it easy to simple to uh, deliver uh, and share the results more readily. So, just a quick note here about the the publications. the The manuscript that accompanies this work is now published in IEEE uh, Geoscience and Remote Sensing Letters. If you'd like to see more about the uh, see more details about the methods. And also the code 
is openly available on Harvard Dataverse uh, via this DOI. So it can be used by anyone. So here's the overall process. And in the following slide, I'll discuss a bit more simply each of the steps um, that FW Date uses. But for a brief overview, first we take the DEM, as I mentioned before. And you, one of the, the novel things about the uh, Earth Engine implementation of this model is that we've added a local outlier filtering procedure to try and correct for errors in elevation at the margins of these floods. So once we have that smooth DEM, we take those boundary pixels and use a cost surface allocation algorithm to create a new surface. So here's the, the step-by-step -step procedure and it's a conceptual and technical replication of the flood water depth estimation tool version two. So it starts with DM acquisition. There's a local outlier filtering of flood margin elevation pixels using a modified z-score and there's an extraction of flood extent boundary pixel elevations from the DEM so that we can construct a new estimated water surface elevation using a cost accumulation algorithm. From there we subtract the smooth DM from the modeled flood surface elevation to calculate the depth. And then to produce a, a flood estimation layer that's more representative of reality, we use a low pass convolution to smooth the layer. So here's a comparison of the results. So in the, in the top left, or in the top, yeah, in the top left there, you can see the IRIC validation layer that we used. And this is a hydrological model that we uh, use to compare the two um, FW debt models. So here, the, the top center map you'll see is the flood water depth estimation tool version 2.0. And the goal with Earth Engine was to replicate those methods so that it would work within that platform as opposed to um, QGIS or ArcGIS. And you can see here that we have relatively similar looking maps at the top. Um, and you'll see as well that we achieved an RMSE that was comparable to and a little bit lower than the 2.0 version. So positive results there. And if you look at the, the histograms below, you can compare each of the, the data products. And just visually upon first glance, you can see that they are the floodwater depth in tool in Earth Engine is quite comparable to the hydrological model. And I want to point out as well that this is a 54 square kilometer area. And the export time from start to finish to run this process was only four minutes. So real briefly, if you're if you're interested in using this tool, it's really easy. So to sign up for Google Earth Engine, all you need is a, a Gmail account to start. It's free, open access. Um, you're usually permitted to use it instantly. From there, if you just copy the script from the Harvard Dataverse repository and paste it into your code editor, it will run immediately. The only two things that are needed are a flood extent layer and the DEM that is already in the uh, in the code and it's pulled from the Earth Engine data repository. And all of those directions are in the script itself. So once the asset is uploaded, you just change the path name and follow parameterization directions and click run and soon you'll have a map. So the parameterization options in FW.GE are, there are two, currently two elevation models that can be used. One is the US GS and ED, which is only for the United States. And we also have available the uh, global 30 meter SRTM elevation data. There are also options to run the outlier filtering 
algorithm that I mentioned. You can also add water body data to the inundation extent to get a continuous surface across your map. There's also an option uh, to add a water body data layer uploaded by the user, or you can use uh, the JRC global surface water data product that is already within the Earth Engine repository. And there are some other options as well for masking out uh, water body data and areas with zero meter flood depth. Um, and there are also exporting options available as well. And if all you want to do is get a quick visualization of the flood depth across the surface, there is a simple visualization option as well to, to cut a lot of the processing steps and just get a quick map and not export. So this tool has already been used successfully in a GFP activation. Um, one example of this is in the Midland County flooding after two dams failed in May of 2020. And on the left here is, the, is a flood extent layer that was produced by uh, Robert Breckenridge at the Dartmouth Flood Observatory. So thank you for that. And on the right, you can see the flood water depth map, basically showing the, the extent of the floods and also depths at each location. So to facilitate sharing these data, we also built an Earth Engine app that is publicly available and also interactable. So this website here at the bottom is live. You can visit this application, pan, zoom, query, um, to retrieve flood water depths anywhere there's uh, at any point in the flood extent layer. So another, another product that was developed during this particular flood was a building impact assessment in Midland, Michigan to show the number of buildings that were impacted and how deep the flood went at each of those, um, in each of those areas. So you can see quite, quite a large number of buildings were affected by floods ranging between zero and uh, about a third of a meter. So an another thing I wanna point out here is the, the time it took to export this area. So this area was 1,182 square kilometers. And the export time for this was only 41 minutes. And these flood inundation maps were uploaded to the DFO website within two days of the flood event. And with the, pro the product now complete, these types of maps and products can be produced and shared in a matter of hours, depending on the availability of the flood extent data. So some of the next steps that we're working on, uh, we're, the next project for the flood water depth estimation tool is to develop a standalone application on the WaterServe website to eliminate the user's need to interact with the code. Right now it is very easy for um, users to extract the code and change some of the options, but we do want to make it as easy as possible to use. And another initiative that is being worked on is integration of remote sensing based observations of flood extent packaged together with um, FW.G to streamline the process even further. So some future research in this area that I'll show in a second is intersecting flood water depth estimations with urban infrastructure to characterize damage risk. Uh, we're also looking to evaluate this model with DMs of multiple spatial resolutions, so using MED, SRTM, ALOS, and MERIT. And we're also interested to validate these models against field data on flood water depth as availability arises. So hoping for more collaboration in that area as, as more flood water depths are collected in the field. 
And in the future, we hope to map more floods in partnership with GFP and also the NASA Earth Science Disasters Program. So here are a couple example maps of future research that we're working on intersecting the floodwater depth with urban infrastructure. And this is the Microsoft building footprint data. Uh, on the left is across Alabama and on the right is across Michigan. And you can see in green, each of those shapes is a building in that data set. And I've zoomed in here to an area in the bottom left where there are different depths and there are also buildings that would be affected by these floods. And um, as you mentioned here, the, the flood water, the flood extent layer used here is the Enviro Atlas uh, 100 year flood layer. So it has continuous coverage across the entire uh, conterminous US and here I'm presenting it for just Alabama. And again, I wanna note the time it took to export this extent for the entire state, um, which amounted to about 20,000 square kilometers of flood extent, only took 73 minutes to complete. So just some references from the presentation. And I want to thank the Global Flood Partnership. And I also have contact information here if anyone is interested to collaborate following this presentation. So. Thank you all for your time.